Three big political events in Europe, they could affect us here. Number one, Austria votes for a new president. Number two, Italy votes on constitutional reform. Number three, France's Prime Minister Hollande has already said he's not seeking a second term. I say Europe is on the verge of a breakup. Let's see what Nigel Farage thinks. He's the man who took the Brits out of the European Union. Nigel, I think you and I are probably in agreement that Europe, they're not looking good at this point. But my question is, how can Europe get back on track? How can they possibly come back to being a unified, dynamic, ongoing organization? Uh, they can't. Yeah. Uh, the European Union is dying before your very eyes. Look, the most significant event that's taken place in the 60-odd years this union's been around is the, is the Brexit vote that took place in June of this year. Now, the lesson they could have learned from that was that actually nation states want to have a bit more of a say over their own lives. So they could have concluded, let's hand back powers. No, they're doing the opposite. They want to pull more and more powers to the centre. Uh, mm. I think the Eurozone is what's really going to play out in this referendum uh, on Sunday in Italy. I think the migrant crisis has enraged much of Europe. No, this thing does not work. Now, in pr what you just said there is very important for our viewers because this is a financial program. You said that if that vote in Italy, if they say no to constitutional reform, you're saying that the eurozone, the euro currency is in deep, deep trouble. And I think you're right. The euro goes down, the dollar goes up, and there's a big repercussions from that. Yes, I agree with that because what will happen um, if Prime Minister Renzi loses on Sunday, which I believe he will, uh, this political revolution of 2016 is not over yet. If he loses, uh, his position as Prime Minister is pretty tenuous. Uh, he'll probably have to form an emergency administration. And the four big Italian banks are basically on the edge of bankruptcy. It's a matter of weeks or months before something like 40 to 50 billion euros is going to be needed to prop up those banks. And I think... Uh, that an Italian general election may come next year rather than the scheduled year after. And I think, do you know what? If the Italian people were asked today to vote whether to stay in the euro or to leave, I believe they'd vote to leave. It's fascinating, and it's all your fault, of course, Nigel. <laughs> well, of course. Right. I'm gonna Thank put you. On, you're welcome. I'm going to put on the screen the three, and sorry, the five most popular boys' names in Britain this year. If you look at number two, it is Mohammed. I have to ask you, Nigel, is this perhaps part of the reason why the Brits said we're out of Europe? Uh, well, let me tell you what names are not popular anymore. Nigel <laughs> is now, I think, the least popular boy's name in the country this year. <laughs> in fact, out of three quarters of a million registrations last year, there were only 14 Nigels. Now, whether that's my fault or not, I'm not sure. Um, look, we have, a, we have a very rapidly growing Muslim population in the United Kingdom. It's increased by 75% over the course of the last 10 years. The point is, virtually all young Muslim boys have Mohammed in their name. So I don't think we should be very surprised about this. I think the Brexit vote wasn't about Islam in particular. What it was about was open doors, numbers, uh, pressure on wages. Yeah. Um, I, I, think that, I think the debate about Islam is the one that will rage in France in their presidential election next year. Well, don't forget, you know, over 230 people have been killed in terrorist attacks in the course of the last year. That's right. That's right. Now, thanks very much for joining us, Nigel. We'd love to have you back on Monday as we pour over the results of the Italian vote and the Austrian vote. We hope you can join us. We will extend an invitation to you. You're nodding you. sagely. I don't know whether you'll take us <laughs> off on it, but we'd like to see you. <laughs> Nigel Farage, everybody. Thanks for joining Thank us, you. Nigel. Good stuff. Thank you, sir. Thank you.